It's now been two years since Britain completed its withdrawal from the European Union and it's still struggling with the fallout. Promised economic gains have failed to materialize. Britain has missed out on much of the recovery and global trade since the pandemic. And the loss of EU workers has worsened labor shortages in healthcare, hospitality, and agriculture. Businesses are also facing higher costs and more red tape. Even the arrival of the milk trucks makes the cheesemaker feel a little wistful. Brexit-related losses forced Simon Sperrell to sell a majority stake in his company. I feel betrayed and really, really quite let down by um, a government that promised much and delivered nothing. His small business used to deliver English cheddar via mail order to private customers in the EU. But thanks to Brexit, every single piece of cheese now requires a certificate from the veterinary office that was prohibitively expensive. There's no way anybody's going to pay another £180 plus all the paperwork that's involved. Nearby in the northern English town of Crewe, few ever imagined that Brexit would be so problematic. Even in the Brexit heartlands, like here in the north of England, people are reversing their opinion. Polls show that a majority now believe that Brexit was a bad idea. However, this does not mean that the decision to leave the EU will be reversed, at least not any time soon. Ron Jones imports rugs from Belgium. He's also facing a lot more red tape because of Brexit. It was never a good idea. It was never a good idea, but it was the will of the people. You can have that one for 20. That's the more and more studies have. show that post-Brexit trade barriers are harming the British economy. And Thank you very the much, lack sir. of EU workers has caused labour shortages. I don't think it's has worked as well as we thought it would, but we did want to be ourselves again, really. The doctors have stopped coming, you know, and the nurses, they're, you know, we've got, we are so down now, it's awful, oh, it's isn't it? It's been an unmitigated disaster, absolute Ooh. disaster. <laughs> yeah. so. In the meantime, Simon Spiral is managing to sell cheese at a profit in the EU again, via the European hub of the new majority shareholder. The cheesemaker would have never dreamt that Brexit would have caused him so many sleepless nights. I asked uh, London correspondent Carl Nassman what changes people in Britain are seeing. There have been so many changes, Terry. Some of those changes have been more visible than others. But as you saw in the piece, this is having a very big economic impact, especially on British small businesses. It is just so much more difficult to do business with the EU. There are customs checks, there are inspections, delays, problems with paying taxes. It has really led to a drastic drop in business between the two blocks. And you have to say it's also more difficult for EU businesses as well to import British goods, to hire British workers, to establish those relationships because the, e the UK is no longer in that EU single market. All of this has become much more obvious over the last couple of years. And of course, it's difficult to try to isolate the economic impacts of Brexit alone. But there have been some studies that have done that. One of the most important coming from an independent government body that estimates Brexit did shrink the UK economy by, by as much as 4%. That is 100 billion pounds per year, Terry. Big difference wow. there. Well, wow. OK. Well, given that, Carl, how do Britons feel about Brexit two years in? Are they satisfied with their decision? Yeah, I mean, it's important to remember this term Brexit fatigue. Very many people here, they simply just didn't want to talk about Brexit. It's been such a long process dating back all the way to 2016 and that EU referendum. Now, however, this year, We've seen a change. People are talking about it more. You heard those complaints in the piece. You hear them if you stand in those long passport lines at EU airports. British people talking about Brexit again. More reports in the media 
as well. And you see these shortages of EU workers too. That all adds up to a big reduction in support for Brexit. One recent poll showing 56% of people here say that leaving the EU was the wrong decision. Even more strikingly, less than a third of people now say it was the right decision. A big reduction in support for Brexit. And finally, Carl, very briefly, uh, are there still issues that still need to be ironed out between the UK and the EU? Very complicated divorce. Very tricky breakup for sure. There was a laundry list of suggestions put forward by a small business bureau here in terms of ways to improve the current trade agreement between the two sides. Some in the Conservative Party want to see a new deal similar to the trade agreement that Switzerland has with the EU. Mm. But look, if you are one of those people that is holding their breath for a new agreement, maybe even the UK rejoining the EU, not going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> even the Labour Party has ruled that out.